Anyway, uh, tonight we have a very special treat. Uh, Brian Heron, W8BYH, has uh, collected a, a ton of information about repeaters and other useful items around Georgia and has created a website to present this information. If uh, you use any of these amateur radio repeater systems, such as Analog FM, D-Star, C4FM, which is, of course, Yesu, uh, DMR, Windlink gateways, digipeaters, or linked repeaters, uh, you, this, this is for you. So um, uh, Brian is a ge geospatial program manager and does web mapping professionally. His mapping project started simply as an exercise in trying to understand the distribution of repeaters across Georgia. And uh, so uh, without any uh, more uh, uh, pomp here, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and hand it, over, hand it over to Brian. Brian, you are a co-host, so go ahead and take it away. Okay. Can somebody tell me if they can see the, uh, the, the lead-in screen, Georgia Aries Situational Awareness web map? Yep, we got yes, it. Sir. Gotcha. Okay, great. I'm using Google, Google Slides, so um, I always have to check. All right. Well, thanks again for uh, inviting me here. I appreciate it. This has got to be, I'm not joking, this has probably got to be the, the uh, 20th, 21st presentation I've done on this web map over the last several years. So excuse me if I, if I sound a little mechanical as I go through the slides, um, but stop me at any time if you have a question uh, or need clarification. Um, and if there's anybody out there in the audience that is that also does GIS, um, feel free to raise your hand. There is nothing magical or mystical about the, 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 the map, the technology, the background or anything that I'm using here. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm open about the data sources. I'm open about the platform. Uh, everything is right out there up front. And I'm more than happy to get other folks up and running uh, trying to do the similar, a similar thing using the platform that I use, which is called ArcGIS Online. Okay, so, all right. So uh, here's what we'll cover. Uh, just a bit of background on the map, uh, some recent changes, uh, information that's in the map itself, um, and some functionality in the map. And uh, then we'll do a live demonstration. All right, so what is it? So the situational awareness map is really nothing more than a web-based tool designed to help Georgia Aries members, really any ham radio operator, um, uh, provide them with a multi-platform up-to-date, always available aware situational awareness tool. I say it, it exists to support Aries operations because that's, you know, that's how I flavor it. Uh, but really, it's public on the web. Anybody can get to it. Anybody can use it. So, all right. So a little bit of history. Uh, this, this effort started back in 2016. Um, as you heard in the introduction, I, um, I do this professionally. I run the uh, geospatial group at Hartsfield Airport. It is the largest uh, geospatial uh, management, data management effort in the civilian airport industry. Um, we're a world leader in what we do. And, uh, so, uh, and I've been doing this really since, almost since 1980. Uh, yeah, GIS goes back that far. Um, started out doing it in the military, did, did 23 years with the Army Corps of Engineers. And then when I retired, I just continued to do it in the civilian world. That's what I do at Hartsfield now. So, um, you know, for me, it was an intellectual exercise. I've been a ham radio operator since 95 and, um, uh, I got bored one afternoon and I said, I wonder how well distributed the repeaters are across the state. Um, I'd spent some time supporting the National Weather Service in Peachtree City. We actually have a station there. And um, there was always what was referred to by the lead forecaster there, Lance Rothfuse, as the silent crescent. And that's a swath of terrain um, that runs through the almost diagonally from northeast to southwest across Georgia, where it was almost impossible to get anybody's attention during heavy weather. You certainly couldn't get the, into these places with linked repeaters. We often had to rely on um, HF or just phone calls. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, I wonder just how good or how bad that repeater distribution really is. 
So I started dredging the public sources of information out there on the web. Um, I did not, I'll say this up front, I did not pull any information from, uh, from CIRA, the Southeastern Link Repeater uh, Association. I did not pull any data directly from any of the online sources uh, like Repeater Book. That's not kosher. I, but you can imagine a lot of inf a lot. There is a lot of repeater information out there that is not locked up in those semi-commercial sources. I was able to bring in, and frankly, everybody shares the same information. Okay, the errors you see in one group, like Repeater Book, you'll find the same errors in in, in another one, like like R Finder. So, um, you know, it's it's clear the same data is just being passed back and forth. I was appalled at how bad the data was. It was really awful. It was spatially incorrect in terms of locations. Uh, the attribute about each of the repeaters was awful. Um, it was just, you know, it, it was just almost so bad as a data manager, I wasn't going to use it. So I, I had a conversation with David Benoist, uh, who uh, most of you probably know, and he's a personal friend of mine. He lives just down the road in Sonoya. And I said, hey, Dave, you know, is there a better source for this information? And he said, Brian, I'm sorry, there isn't. He said, I can't give you access to the CIRA database. That has its own problems, too. And I said, well, how about we set up a system where the repeater, op the repeater owners and the ARIES, ECs, and repeater trustees can opt in, can give us their information? He said, well, that might work. So we put something together. We presented for the first time at the 2018 Aries state meeting um, with what was called the Georgia Aries Repeater Database Initiative. That's a whole separate topic of conversation we won't get into here. Just, just know that there is an effort out there to clean up repeater information in the state of Georgia, and we're doing it through the Aries Repeater Database Initiative. And I'll show you how to access that when we get to play with the map. Um, and in 2019, I just I, I was adding a lot of functionality to the map. I was adding a lot of data layers uh, that really turned it into turned it from being just a repeater map to a situational awareness map. So again, in 2019, I renamed it the Aries Situational Awareness Map. Any questions? No. Okay. Hope everybody's still awake. All right. So what's the technology that drives the map? Um, it's, it's built and hosted on a web mapping platform called ArcGIS Online. And for those of you who, uh, who have uh, heard of Esri, um, they, it's the company that builds and supports ArcGIS Online. They are the big dog in geographic information systems. They are the equivalent to GIS as, as Microsoft is to operating systems. They own the market. Um, owned by by two people, a husband and wife, Jack Dangerman and his wife. Um, and they're, he's a benevolent dictator. He is what I call the last of the uh, granola crunching, Volvo driving, Birkenstock wearing hippies um, who stumbled on a good thing. And he turned this company into the world leader in GIS technology. So ArcGIS Online is fully cloud-based. There's, you know, there is no desktop component there is, but we're not going to talk about it. There's, uh, it, you know, it is a it is a web based mapping platform, um, but it's not just graphics. So if you know anything about geographic information systems, most of the data is actually stored in it, either in what are called shape files, which is kind of a data interchange format that that web mapping folks use, or it's stored in relational databases. And virtually all the data that I presented the map is stored in relational databases somewhere. Usually it's not my relational database, it's somebody else's. I'm just tapping into their data. Um, as I said, we get the data from multiple sources. I really only develop and maintain the repeater information. Just about everything else in the map is developed and maintained by other parties or individuals who, put, who participate in this thing called the ArcGIS Online ecosystem. Now, I'll tell you, the ArcGIS Online ecosystem is huge, and ArcGIS Online is in use by an incredible swath of groups. Every three-letter agency in the U.S. government uses ArcGIS Online. That includes Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, the, the FBI, the Department of Defense, uh, and of course, at the state level, GEMA, 
uh, and uh, uh, most of the NGOs that we, we think of when we talk about, you know, ham radio support is, you know, Red Cross, um, Salvation Army, um, you know, these, these folks all use ArcGIS online. All right. It, uh, it's kind of a ubiquitous mapping platform. All right. Um, it's browser based. So all you need is a web browser. And it runs just fine in any modern browser technology. Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari runs just fine in Linux, as long as you're using Chromium or um, um, any one of the, the, the compliant um, Linux-based browsers. What it will not run in, and I'm going to, I, I got to say this because it's, it, I always get surprised at the number of guys out there who say, oh, I just can't give up, uh, give up on XP, man. I just, you know. Uh, well, if you want to run these maps, you're going to have to give up on XP uh, because I don't even think it'll run well in the Chrome version that still runs in Windows XP or Windows 7. So please don't don't try to make it run with Internet Explorer. It won't work or it, well, it'll it'll open, but you'll get all kinds of errors. Um, and, um, you, you know, just just understand you got to be on a fairly modern browser technology. Um, and it'll run on any platform, desktop, laptop, tablet, phone. The way the technology, the mapping technology works is it senses your, um, your device and it reconfigures itself to run on your device. All the functionality that you get on the desktop in the map, you will also get on your phone. Now it'll reconfigure itself. It'll look, you know, it'll, you know, it'll, things will be squished here and there, but, uh, but, it, but it runs really well. The technology does a great job of reconfiguring itself on the fly. Okay, Uber Geek Alert. This is for folks out there who uh, are into this kind of thing. So what is this map really? It's really nothing but a collection of rest endpoints. So if you know what a rest endpoint is, or a represent, representational state endpoint, um, and that's a URL that points to a, to a data uh, data source sitting on a server, and that REST endpoint controls a lot of things, how the data will look when it's pulled across, uh, you know, what data comes out of the, the database and what data stays in the database, whatever. So it's, it's just a bunch of REST endpoints brought into a template. And that's really all it is. There's nothing magical about it. Um, yeah, I think that's that's jump really in here and say that uh, I'm familiar with the REST endpoints because uh, I've done programming with that for various um, software applications in my job. Good. Okay. Great. Now, one of the great things about REST endpoints is um, if you have an application that can accept a REST endpoint, um, you can bring my data or anybody else's data that is published out through this ecosystem into your application. Happens all the time. Uh, for example, um, anybody out here familiar with WebEOC? Um, if you are, WebEOC, the, the mapping interface, WebEOC is built, was built using a, a package called Arc Objects, and it is compliant, and you can, uh, you, you can just grab my REST endpoints on my maps and feed them into WebEOC if you're supporting um, an EOC up there in, uh, up there in GARS land. Um, so it's a really good portable web technology. And that's what I do. I just grab other people's REST endpoints and bring them into the map. Um, works like a charm. <clears throat> and like I said, the, it will conf the map will configure itself on the fly based on the device that you're using. So runs really well on, and it, and it runs really well on these, these smaller devices too, with often with lower bandwidth capabilities. It, um, it is a really good, robust technology. OK, so what data is in the map? This is not a comprehensive list. We're going to take a look uh, at it once we get the map up and running. But uh, you know, we got county data, repeater data, what I call um, emergency services data, which is hospitals, fire stations, whatever. I got shelters crossed out there for a second. I'll talk about that uh, as we get to the bottom of the list. So, Aviation stuff, uh, power outages, uh, hurricane tracks, uh, and hurricane evacuation routes, you know, th that list you see there. Okay. The data in the map changes. Um, 
and it really it, it changes for for several reasons. The biggest reason is um, the data owner takes their data offline. They shut down their REST endpoint. Um, and that they do that for a number of reasons. Sometimes the data becomes stale and they decide they don't want to share it out anymore. Um, sometimes uh, this often happens. Um, you know, ArcGIS Online is a subscription-based service. And if you don't pay your bill, the lights go off, okay? Uh, so there have been times where uh, folks who have put, you know, posted out really good data that I've been using, um, they just they just decide they want out of the web mapping business and, uh, you know, they don't pay their licensing fees and, you know, Esri kind of shuts down the, uh, the rest endpoint. Um, yes. Uh, somebody asked, does ArcGIS offer nonprofit rates? Um, so getting ahead of me here, but I'll answer that question right now. So yes, they, they do. Um, they have, they have fee structures based on you, you know who you, you know who you are and how you support what i'm using to develop what you're seeing here is what's called a personal use license esri uh set this up several years ago as a way to help folks uh who just want to keep up on their gis skills but you know can't afford a full up license it's 100 bucks a year uh, the restriction is I can only do this either for myself or for nonprofit organizations. So since I'm doing this for Aries, Aries is a nonprofit organization. It's legal for me to do it and share this out. However, um, the um, you know if somebody says, "Hey, can you can you make a map for me for the Red Cross?" My response is because I've been asked this question is the Red Cross has its own licensing agreement with Esri. And they have access to this software. That means I can't do anything for them. If the Red Cross let me into their environment to use their licensing, I, I would do it. But I can't create anything with my personal use license to, to support organizations like the Red Cross. That said, um, uh, yes. So, you know, there are special rates for nonprofits, uh, special rates for NGOs. Um, you know, it, it, you really have to talk to an Esri um, sales rep uh, to get a sense of what they would charge you. It is a per seat or a per user, per license or a per named user uh, account system. And I'm going to tell you, unfortunately, it is not cheap. <laughs> okay. Um, at the airport, um, for 50 user seats in their environment, when we first got started, uh, we were paying seventeen thousand five hundred dollars a year, so it ain't cheap. Um, now you, you get a whole lot with that seventeen five, and there's a lot behind the uh, the ArcGIS Online uh, um, ecosystem here that most people just don't see. But like I said, it's it's not cheap. It's extremely robust. It's in wide use. Um, but uh, if you go if you're coming in into it from a commercial perspective or even from an NGO um, or a nonprofit perspective, it can still be fairly pricey. I hope I didn't scare anybody off. I would encourage folks, you can go out and set up a free ArcGIS online account. It doesn't cost you a thing. You can't create any of your own data. You just have to make maps using data that other people uh, provide. Um, or like I do, I pay $100 a year, I can create my own data, store my own data, um, you, you know, whatever else. Um, so there are ways to get into it for free or at very low cost. All right, any other questions? No, I okay. would ask, uh, does anybody ever help throw in, uh, uh, does anybody help pitch in for you to defray your costs or do you take donations? Nope, don't take donations, don't want donations. Um, if I took a donation for the work that I do, that means I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a nonprofit. I'm, I'm not doing this, um, you know, out of the, I, I'm not, I, I'm not adhering to the spirit of the licensing. And I wouldn't, even if I, even if I could, I wouldn't take him anyway. The, to me, this is as much a hobby as it is, you know, a, a, a job. I really enjoy doing this. I'm lucky that I really like what I do for a living. 
Okay, so we talked about the data. What are the tools that are embedded in the map? So uh, we'll talk, we'll, you know, when we do go live, we'll take a look at this. Um, you know, you can do things like switch the base maps and turn the data layers on and off. You can draw graphics. Uh, you can identify points on the ground by coordinate system. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. So there's these little blocks of code called widgets that get added to the map that add functionality, that do things against the data. And we'll take a look at those here in just a bit. So let's talk about some of the changes that have come uh, just in the last year. Um, between uh, 2019 and 2020, I, I, I got real serious about WinLink. I'm a huge WinLink fan. I am really a big WinLink fan. I support WinLink here for uh, Fayette County Aries. I, give, I do classes on it. Um, I run the Digipeter down here in Fayette County, uh, the KK4GQ-15 Digipeter. And we're talking seriously about setting up a, a Vera FM uh, environment. So yeah, I'm a really big supporter of WinLink. So I decided it was some time to get, get serious about the WinLink gateway coverages and the Digipeter and packet coverages. So I added data about that. I was asked to put in information about the uh, Georgia Echolink conference. So I put that in there. Uh, added hurricane e evac routes provided by the Department of Transportation. And this was one that surprised me. Power outages by county. GEMA makes that available. And they actually, they actually buy into or pay licensing to a service. We'll take a look at it when we go live. I can't remember what it is. It is not a cheap service. They're paying, GEMA's paying a lot of money for access to this data. Uh, it's a data aggregation company that goes out to all the utilities and says, where, where, you know, how many outages do you have? How many customers do you serve in that area? They calculate statistics and they put these map layers out. And GEMA makes that data available. I, I, I fully expected they would wake up and say, why are we sharing this out for free? Uh, but they still make it available. I think that's really kind of cool. Waze, Waze traffic alerts, GDOT cameras to include not live video that, that hasn't come through yet, but but real time or li, near real time snapshots of traffic conditions from the traffic cameras. Um, real, tra real time traffic conditions provided as a service by Esri, the, the folks that make this mapping platform. And of course, you know, hurricanes and tropical storms. And this last one here, we'll talk about county critical infrastructure. Okay. All right. Uh, the other big change that came in 2020, we're not going to talk a whole lot about it, um, but the gateway to the map shifted from being a URL that gets you to the map to this new platform called the Georgia Aries Web Map Resources website. And basically, I was getting so many different requests for different maps and you know hosting my data out there for others to grab that I decided it was just time to take it to its own website so um, so this resource um, you know provides M, you know emergency communication tools allows you to get to my data or easier it's easier for me to manage um, and is now the default gateway to the situational awareness map the other thing is it's permanently linked from the Georgia Aries website so when you go to the left-hand column under maps, and you'll click that expandable uh, table of contents. Uh, you'll see situational map, you click there. That's what will open up is the web map resources interface. And again, we'll take a quick look at that here in a minute. Um, I talked about this concept, the county critical infrastructure web map. I was asked by both Fayette County, my home county, um, and Butts County to, you know, help them pro help the uh, EMA um, with putting more dense and more accurate critical infrastructure information into the map, and then creating maps just for the counties. Uh, and I said, sure, we'll give it a try. Because I'll be honest with you, a, a lot of the data that is provided, for example, by Department of Homeland Security, for things like EOC locations and fire station locations is getting badly out of date. Um, they did it, they, they did their first data development uh, effort right after 9-11. Uh, they did a very good job and they came up with nationwide databases on EOC locations and fire stations and um, you know just all this emergency infrastructure. And it was a snapshot in time. They didn't really put a lot of effort into going back and continuously updating that data. And I don't really know what their data update plan is. They, 
you know, the, the director of the Department of Homeland Security just, he doesn't call me anymore, being a little facetious there. Um, so so there, is, there is a lot of this emergency data that's still being provided as a rest endpoint, but it's, it's, it's getting old. It's getting pretty old. So that was a problem in Fayette County and Butts County. And they said, can you create a custom map that has our most updated information? I said, sure, we'll give it a shot. So we're launching this thing called the County Critical Infrastructure Web Map. And we'll take a we'll take a look at that. If you like it, I'm gonna I gotta highlight this last part down here. I gotta high, you know, if you like what you see here in this map, the time to ask for one of these county critical infrastructure web maps or the update uh, to a data layer that's currently running in the map or additional training is not the morning of you know this you know the scheduled emergency test, or it's not when the eye of the hurricane is you know, coming right over Pensacola, you know, it's now, it's, it's ask me now, you know, get it done before the spring storm season arrives. Um, because I get real busy once, uh, you know, once the, the tornado season arrives just here in Fayette County. So ask early, beat the rush, beat the Christmas rush, as they say. All right. We already talked about this. How's it, how's it funded? I won't, I won't go any any further in this, but you just know I'm using a personal use license that I pay for every year. It's hundred. It's only hundred bucks, um, and uh, it, it specifically prohibits me from supporting commercial activities, and I can't support other organizations that are eligible for reduced pricing on Esri licensing for ArcGIS Online. Okay, so you know, I see this as my personal contribution to amateur radio in Georgia. That's just how I view it. Plus, I enjoy doing it. It's a free and open resource. It's open. It's it's public on the web. I can't, you know, I can't hide it. I can't lock it down. It's it's available. So, so as much as you guys are looking at it, trust me, the Chinese and the Russians are looking at it too. All right. So how do I find it? A um, couple of ways. You can go, the most common way is go to the Georgia Aries website. So let's go there real quick. Uh, here's the Georgia Aries website. And if you come over here to the left, you see this pull down for maps. All right, you go there, you go down to the bottom here, Georgia Situational Awareness. You click there. And what happens is it opens up that web page I talked about, Georgia Aries Web Map Resources. Um, we won't we won't talk about this. Um, I encourage you to go out there and play around in it, see what's in there. This this elevation profile tool is broken. I got to go in there and fix it. I'm not sure what happened. I was just checking it today, and it doesn't. It's not working properly. But this is the situational awareness map. It runs just fine in this interface. Or you can here come up here, say click here, and you know open it um, in a full window or a full tab. So when it opens up, um, you get a splash page and you can click this, do not show the splash page screen again. It will go away until you uh, flush your browser cache. Okay. Just to let you know, well, you know, what's in here, what the intended use is, um, who publishes it. You just click okay to dismiss it. So let's talk about the layout of the map. When it opens up by default, you have the two meter and 70 centimeter analog repeaters turned on. Everything else is pretty much everything else is turned off. And you can see there's a lot of stuff in this, this map, okay? So this is the layer list, okay? It, it, it opens by default when you open the map. And again, two meters and 70 centimeter repeaters are turned on. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's look, navigate around the perimeter of the map. So come up here, you got the, uh, the title bar, situational awareness map. This search box right here is actually very important. This is kind of, this is, this controls a lot of configured searches within the map. So you can search for repeater by frequency. You can search by repeater call sign. Um, you can search for packet, wind link packet gateways. You can search for street addresses. Um, so let's go 4GQ, okay? All right, KK4GQ, I uh, did a quick search there. It found four repeaters that have KK4GQ in the name, okay? Um, most of them are sitting on this tower. This is our Ellis Road Tower in downtown Fayetteville. Um, 
nice 300 foot tower paid for by the uh, Georgia, uh, the uh, well, actually it was built for the Olympics. Um, and uh, it's now run by Georgia, uh, Georgia State Patrol. And um, they give us space on the tower, 300 feet. We're the tallest thing on the tower. Um, we got D star, we got two meters, we got 70 centimeters, 70 centimeters and the digipeter sitting on that tower. So, um, so that just shows, you know, you do searches or you can search by, uh, all right. You can search by frequency. So I, I typed in, uh, 145.210, uh, and it shows you the repeaters in the database that, uh, have the output frequency of 145.210. Um, and again, I, I, you type that in because that's our frequency for our two meter repeater on the Ellis Road Tower in downtown Fayetteville at 300 feet. Okay, so there's a lot of functionality built into the search bar. Um, and uh, what's really good is you don't have to go in here and pick any of these. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to, you can just start typing in here and see what pops up. Okay, so that's the search functionality. This little link here is, or this little icon here is for the links tab. So it takes you a bunch of places. It takes you back to the Georgia Aries website. Uh, it gives you a QR code that you can scan on uh, your mobile device to open the map. The change log, okay? Um, I run a change log for this map and you go in here, you can see all the way back to, how far back do we go? I know I go back before that. Yeah, I think I started in January, looks like, January 2018, but you can see all the changes that have gone in. Fleet coming in on secure channel. Okay, um, so this I, I do this just to just to let people know that the, you know the map does get a lot of attention. There are a lot of changes. There's a lot of additions, a lot of deletions, a lot of functionality changes. I come in here and I test things out, and if they work great, they stay in. If they don't work, I pull them out. Um, but if they stay in, it gets in, it gets put into the change log. Uh, Georgia Aries database initiative and update form. I would encourage you if you are a repeater owner or a repeater trustee or an Aries EC to please come in here, click this. This is a whole separate web page with its own supporting resources. Please read that over. That's how data gets into this map. That's how curated repeater data gets into this map. Okay. Um, Contact information for me, and then Georgia Aries Web Map Resources. That takes you back to the web page that we were just looking at uh, that I created to host all of this. Okay, so that's that's the links. If you come down to the bottom here, this row of colored circles with icons is what I call the widget library, and this is the functionality that's built into the map. Um, you can. You know, you see this, the layer list is kind of popped up and there's a little dot up underneath it. That means that it's turned on and visible in the map. So if I click it, it turns off the layer list and the little dot goes away. And uh, let's say I want to see the legend. Okay, same thing there. It gets elevated in the layer list or the, excuse me, the, the widget bar. Um, that little dot appears underneath it. But what we've got here is, let me zoom out here so we can get a better perspective. What we got here is for a base map gallery. So you don't just have to live with the map background that I picked here by default. You can actually select any one of these backgrounds to use in the map. The most popular one is imagery with labels. This is Esri's worldwide image database. It's free to use um, and, you know, it, it, the, the quality of the imagery varies from excellent, which you'll usually find around major metropolitan areas because the imagery is updated more frequently. You get out in the middle, you get out, out in the middle of Nebraska, you know, the, you know, the currency and the quality might not be quite as good because there's just no demand for it out there. But here in the metro Atlanta area, um, it is actually very good. Um, so let's go down here. I'll tell you what, let's go back to uh, my repeater. Okay, KK4GQ, turn it off, zoom down here. All right, there, you can see the tower. Kind of, it was taken at a, a bit of an oblique angle. 
but you can see the tower um, fairly clearly. Um, very good quality imagery. Very good quality imagery. So does somebody have, can, can somebody give me a, uh, a call sign they'd like to search for? We can see what the, uh, see how uh, that, see if we can locate where that repeater is. Yeah, W4BTI. W4BTI, okay. It's in the database, let's have a look. All right, zoom in here. Get rid of the pop-up box there, okay. All right, so W4BTI, you can, it, it might be hard for folks to look at, you might have to kick, cant your head to the left a little bit, but you're seeing a, you know, a row of uh, towers on this uh, ridge line here. So I imagine W4BTI is up on one of those towers. Uh, it was, it's moved. That's one of the reasons I noticed it. Oh, okay. All right. It's, it's a completely different place now. So, well, so I would encourage you to go to this Aries repeater database initiative and update form. Read it. If you haven't, um, there is an online form where you can submit that change to us. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, you know, the, the, the website explains everything, you know, what we're after, what the, what the initiative is all about and why we ask people to use the form rather than, because I, I get folks who email, hey, you know, I moved my repeater from this street corner to that street corner. I said, please go in to use the form. That is the record of change for the database. That's why we, uh, you know, we ask people to use the form. Okay. All right. But, uh, but anyway, so um, anybody else want to give it a try? W4DV. W4DV, Delta Victor. Correct. I, so I got three of them in here. <sighs> okay. So, right smack in the middle of downtown Augusta, right? Well, I don't think so, but okay. again, it's it's only as good as the data you get. Yeah. Yes. And there, I'm glad you, I am glad you ping this. This is one of the problems we have with a lot of repeater data is, um, the repeater owners gave just the geographic either gave the geographic center of the town or city that the, you know, the repeaters registered for, or they didn't give anything. And somebody used a geocode service to say, well, this thing is in Augusta, Georgia. What you saw was, was somebody ran a geocode service that dropped the W4DV repeater dot in the geographic center of the city of Augusta. Um, this is the kind of stuff that goes on all over the place. And there's probably, let's click on this W4DV. You notice it says one of seven. That means there's probably five or six other repeaters that are stacked. You can see them, they're stacked right on top of each other. One dot right on top of the other. Um, because uh, we don't have, I don't have any better geographic information for those repeaters. That's easy to fix if the owners or trustees or areas ECs can just get in there, to use that form that's available from this repeater database initiative website. Um, you know, update the location information and any information about the repeater, even if it's gone off the air. And you know, it's gone off the air. You know? Aside aside from ground truth, uh, what? Is there a source of accurate data? I know the FCC has a database for towers, uh, but is there any way to retrieve that data accurately that that uh, might be a good source for the repeater owners? Um, well, I mean, I would assume the repeater owners know where the repeaters are, right? Well, yeah, by street address or something along those lines. Well, you know, they can, you know, if they wanted, so let's, for example, if they wanted to use this, as a tool to get coordinates for their repeaters. So let's go down here and let's say, ah, okay. okay. So let's say, let's say this was, a, this feature here was a tower, okay? What they can do is come in here and there is a um, coordinate tool in here. Excellent. They can click here and they can say, I wanna know what the coordinates, the precise coordinates of that point is. You can go up here, you, could, you grab this little icon, it's a little tag icon. Okay, come over here, you click there, all right, and it gives you latitude and longitude and U.S. national grid. And latitude and longitude, you get, you know, several different formats. Most folks use degrees, minutes, and seconds, but actually 
the web mapping service is like decimal degrees, this one here, okay? Copy it, click here, copy it to your, your um, clipboard, and drop it into a, uh, drop it into that form to update the information, so. Fantastic. Yep. By the way, I'd like to uh, compliment you on this uh, several times over because I'm sort of a connoisseur of maps and uh, this is one of the best systems. It's, I've never seen them and I've done a lot of map work either through aviation or other activities. And this uh, shows so much data, it's incredible. But I have one quick question. Do you think, have you ever thought about putting in uh, nets so that in other words, someone who comes in and says, gee, I'm in this area right now. I wonder if there's a net active. Well, that, you know, that would require some kind of a real-time trigger or notification that says there's a, there's a, there's a net active. Well, actually a scheduled. Well, uh, okay. List. So schedules, um, you know, I, there's probably a way to, to tackle it programmatically, but, you know, I've got a day job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, there's so much you can do with this, um, but I got to balance that against you know other things in sure. life. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, like so when the folks who uh, you know folks who asked that I put the um, uh, both the Southeastern Link repeater and the Echo Link conference information in here, I said, "Listen, guys, you you need to do the legwork. You tell me which repeaters are in that network, and then you keep me updated." on what's, ha you know, what's happening with the repeaters. If you add a repeater or a repeater drops out, you know, let me know, let me know. Don't, don't expect me to chase your data. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, you know, there, there, that's the aerial imagery. Um, again, all you got to do is click over here and select it. Another good, good one to use if you're supporting uh, you know, some kind of an event and you really want the data to pop, you can select this light gray canvas. And what it does is it subdues the background and allows your data to pop out better. Um, okay, so that was base maps. Uh, this is attribute tables. So if you want to look at the, uh, the database attribute table for any of the layers in the map, you turn the layer on and then you turn on the attribute table widget and you can take a look at uh, the data that's in the database for that information layer. Uh, righty, measurements. You can do measurements in area or linear uh, distance and just about any, uh, you know, anything you need. Acres, square miles, square feet, yards, hectares, whatever. Okay, kind of a fairly standard measuring tool. You can draw. You can draw on the map. You can put graphics on the map. They do not persist. If you refresh the map or you close the map and open it back out, your drawing goes away. But you know, say you're supporting an EOC, um, and you know they want, uh, you know they they need something drawn on the map to show an area of operation or an incident or whatever. As long as you don't re, as long as you don't close the map out and bring it back in, the um, the drawing of the graphics will stay. Quick question. Yes. Uh, I thought I saw contours on one map. Is there a choice that will show the contours? So if you uh, go back here, but the default map is the, the topographic map that you see here. And there are contours in here. They're kind of hard to see. Okay. The other option you've got is the U.S. national map. Now, this, the U.S. national map is, a little, as you can see, is quite a bit better. Okay. Uh, but as you zoom in, it is kind of, no, it's not. It's actually holding pretty good. There it goes. Yeah, scale dependent. You zoom in too far, the map goes away. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so you, got, you have the contour lines with the USGS national map. The USGS national map is the replacement for the old topo maps. But you still have access to the topo maps too, if you like old style stuff. Just understand that these maps have not been updated since the 1990s. Okay, so. Um, you know, that limitation. The U.S. national map is updated fairly regularly. Okay, so there's your contours. Uh, we already talked about coordinate systems uh, or the coordinate tool. Um, you know, just 
you need to find the coordinates for an area like this this hilltop right here uh click there uh you know and it gives you that location in a bunch of formats for de for degrees and u.s national grid and utm okay all right close that close that a grid overlay. Um, so this is for U.S. National Grid. Um, I am a huge supporter of U.S. National Grid. Um, I, 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 I deal with geography every day of my life. I will tell you that degrees, minutes, and seconds is a terrible way to try to pass location information. It is too easy to get wrong. That's why they came up with the U.S. National Grid. And for those of you who have any military experience, particularly you Army and Marine Corps types, U.S. National Grid is nothing more than the military grid reference system extended across the United States. That's all it is. So if you can, you know, if you learned in the Army how to read a map and, uh, you know, read right and up to get your coordinates, it's the same thing you're looking at here. So uh, oh, since we're doing grids, do you do maidenhead grid squares? No. I will tell you, nobody uses Maidenhead except ham radio. Okay. Um, plus, I have looked around for a Maidenhead grid overlay for this because other, you're not the first person to ask that question. And nobody's really built a good Maidenhead representation. Um, most of them were kind of kludgy. But, you know, nobody, <laughs> again, this, this, this map is really built for, for Aries. Um, you know, the U.S. National Grid is relevant. Degrees, uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds is relative to EOC operations and things like that. Street addresses are very important for that kind of stuff. Nobody uses Maidenhead Grid except for ham radio. Okay, I mean it has its purpose. It's a good grid system, um, but uh, nobody else in the world uses it. <laughs> Not really. So, um, okay. So I put a share link in here so if you you know if you want to share this this out to folks and you can't remember what the url is or you want a shortened url instead of this long thing up here you know you can get a gen, you know bitly generated shortened url you can get it here you can share it by email or you can share it in facebook okay not don't have a problem at all sharing this out printing this is um this this is one of the most useful, but also probably one of the most misunderstood functions here. Let me get rid of a few things in the map. Um, and we will change the ba base map to back to the uh, topographic map. Okay. So we're back in Fayette County. So let's say I'm supporting the county, Fayette County EOC, and they want to, for some reason, they want, you know, this map of downtown Fayetteville. So I can use this print tool. I can change the map title. Say Fayetteville, Georgia. Uh, the layout by default is A3 landscape. Um, but I'm going to do tabloid B landscape. The default format, output format is PDF. There are some advanced options you can you can select here. Um, I won't deal, I won't mess around with any of these. You can play around with them. When I hit print, what happens is uh the 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 web the web map repackages itself ships a geojson file off to a print server sitting in esri's cloud and then generates it as a pdf and sends it back to me as a link it's just it comes back as a link opens up um here's the map i just sent off uh you know it gives you a scale a scale bar uh shows you what was turned on in the table of contents at the time. And of course, all these notations at the bottom to give credit where credit is due. Um, you, can, you can alter some of these things. You can force a scale. So if every your EOC wants everything to be done at one to 50,000 scale, um, you, know, you know, whatever. So the, there are some options in here, but just know that, you know, it goes out and it comes back as a PDF. Uh, you cannot get any any sizes larger than tabloid, okay? And the reason is we get, I get requests all the time. Hey, can we do an E size plot or a D size plot? 
Um, no, and the reason is the file sizes get so big, you would never get that PDF back. So that's one of the reasons that uh, they don't offer anything other than tabloid size is the largest format. But it is, it you know, it really does work well. Um, this last icon here that I'll talk about is the info icon. So this is just, you know, what this map is all about, what's in it, how it works, and how to get a hold of me if you need to. Okay. What we haven't talked about yet is the layer list, what's in the map, okay? Usually I start th with this and then move on to functionality, but uh, I decided to switch things up tonight. So like I said, by default, two meter and 70 centimeter analog repeaters. And there is, like I said, there's always data behind the map. So if you click on a repeater, um, open it up, what you're getting a view into is the database table and you're seeing the information that I have decided to share out um, through this pop-up. And you'll, you'll get information about the repeater and whether it's a verified repeater, which means the trustee, the Aries EC or the owner has submitted their information through the Georgia Aries Repeater Database Initiative Program. And um, so let's go down to Fayette County here, go to KK4GQ. Again, um, two. Uh, let's go to the two meter. Do, 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 do. There it is, 146. Yeah. All right, we'll just deal with this one. Okay. Um, so um, you'll notice um, there's a website link to the KK4GQ website. Uh, our club website. It's got battery backup. It is a verified repeater, which means the repeater trustee, which is me, has submitted the information about this repeater to the uh, database. So there is always information about the repeater on the mouse click. Um, and so talking about verified repeaters, those are again repeaters where the owners you know, have submitted their information. Only about 12% of the repeaters in the database have been verified. Most have not. Now I still show you every repeater that's in the database, but understand that only about 12% in total for all repeaters have been verified. Um, and uh, so that means there's, a, there's 650 repeaters in the database, yeah, 624. Um, so that's a lot of unverified repeaters that are out there. Um, and, you know, three years of, of doing presentations on this, I've never been able to get above 12%, just barely above 12% for verified. A uh, question. Yes. Verified essentially means that the last time you did an update, it was verified, you know, it was a proper update, but it could have changed since then. And you, obviously, you know, you're not going to find that out automatically. So the value of verified, I guess, is, is, again, the last change was verified, but you don't know if it's still that way. Is that? Well, that's why, you know, in the forum, we, we ask repeater owners or trustees or ECs, if there's a change, tell us about the change. There is, you know, if, if, you, when you, if you go to that website, again, come up here to the links, Let's just click and go there, okay? Because that's a good way to, to go there. So this is the website. Um, this is the form that we ask you to use to update your information. It's a simple Google form, okay? But one of the options in here is um, I want to add a new repeater. I want to delete a repeater, change the status, update technical information. Or I've simply reviewed my repeater information and it's all good. Um, or other, and you get to put other in here. So... It's not just, you know, one and done. We want repeater owners to keep coming back with any changes that they might have. Okay. And what happens is this all gets dumped into a Google sheet uh, spreadsheet and I get a, it triggers a notification. I get an email saying, Hey, somebody submitted an update to uh, uh, the, uh, the update program, go check it out. And uh, usually I get the, the updates done in about a day. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but let's let's take a quick look at some of the others here. So, got D Star. Let's turn all this. Up. I've got D Star repeaters. Okay. Not a whole lot of them, right? I know there's more D Star repeaters out there. These are the only ones that 
uh, have been submitted to me. Okay. Um, C4 FM or um, System Fusion. Again, I know there's more out there. These are the only ones that have been submitted. DMR. Oh, God, DMR. Just, you know, we, we pulled our hair out over DMR for over a year. And again, I know there's more DMR repeaters out there, but we had, we struggled with, you know, how do we handle DMR? Because um, there's so many variables, so many things change. And what we finally decided we we're going to do is we're not going to worry about it. Um, we are just going to, let me find one with the proper setup here. Boy. All right, I'm not, uh, not doing too good here. What we decided to do, my apologies, is um, if that DMR repeater participates in one of the DMR organizations, um, uh, this is bugging me because I know we've, we've done this. Okay, all right. Okay, so DMR, DMR webpage, the way we decided to do it is we'll just provide a link to that repeater's web page. This is a Brandmeister. This is this is a Brandmeister network. So we just provide a link to that repeater's page in Brandmeister, rather than trying to keep track of all of the stuff about that repeater. Um, so you know, if you got a DMR repeater and you you know it it participates in Brandmeister or DMARC or any of the others, uh, we'll just provide we'll just embed the link to that repeater's page in that system. Uh, this is, uh, we're talking about networks, Peach State Intertie, Southeastern Link Repeater Net. Okay. Now, you know, the question was, can you, you know, show the nets, a schedule? You know, that's where I'd say, uh, you know, instead I'd say, let's see here. Uh, do we provide a link to the, we don't, we don't provide a link to the, the, the Peach State Intertie webpage. But, you know, that's where I'd say, just go out to the web and, you know, go to the website for that, that, uh, um, that net, you know, find out when it operates. Echo Link, the Echo Link Conference, the Georgia Echo Link Conference, verified areas, repeaters. So these, so, so think of it, everything you're seeing here, two meters, 70 uh, D, D star, Echo Link, everything else, it's all pulling from the same database. I'm just filtering the data out differently for each layer. So this is all coming out of a single unified database, all this repeater information. Digipeters, okay. Um, WinLink, Win, well, WinLink is actually a separate database, but it, it works pretty much the same. All the WinLink gateway data is in a, in a single database and I just pull it out, filter it out uh, to create individual layers. Uh, let's talk very quickly about hospitals, EOCs, and fire stations. So I'm going to use this as an example and a lead into county critical infrastructure. Um, so the EOC data is provided by Department of Homeland Security. It was, I believe, originally part of what was called the High Field Database that was created right after 9-11. Very comprehensive database. I, I used it when I worked for First Army Headquarters here in Atlanta. Um, the problem is it hasn't been updated since probably 2003 or four. Um, so it shows Fayette County EOC sitting right here um, in the old county complex area. Well, it used to be there. It's now way over here, the end of this road right here. It's moved in the last 10 years. Okay. But uh, you know, the, the Department of Homeland Security hasn't updated this database. Let me turn the Peach State, State Intertie. Those kinds of problems, whether it's with EOCs or fire stations or police stations or anything else, uh, the data is getting stale. There's nothing I can do to fix it directly. Like I said, the Department of Homeland Security doesn't listen to me. But what we can do is we, we can create a different layer that has more accurate information uh, for the county. And that's where we came up with the county critical infrastructure concept. So working with our, e, uh, our EMA and our uh, county EC, which is um, uh, Lynn Bianco, KN4YZ, 
we decided ourselves what was critical infrastructure for the county and it was all the fire stations and it was the police department and sheriff's department locations and it was falcon field and the national weather service office at falcon field and we created that as a separate layer so now we have Fayette County critical infrastructure specifically tailored for our use to include the, the proper location of the uh, EOC. And we also did the same thing for, for Butts County. Um, they had slightly different requirements. They didn't really care about, uh, well, obviously they, don't have, they, they do have airfields, but they didn't care about the airfields. They just wanted to know where their, um, their primary um, uh, what am I saying? Their primary uh, shelter was, um, and then just uh, some fire station information. But that's great because that was the EMA in the county specifying what was critical infrastructure to him, rather than me making a guess. So what I'm, and we've done it just for Fayette and Butts County. And what I'm saying is we can do the same for any other county. The the uh, the, the, the thing to remember, though, is you have to tell me what your critical infrastructure is and where it is. OK, I don't have any kind of magic easy button I can press that uh, gives me the updated location for example, your fire stations or if your EOC has moved. OK, you need to provide me that information. I will put it into this map and I will change it as you tell me to change it when things, you know, situations uh, change and you build new fire stations, you decommission others, that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it gives a more accurate representation of the critical infrastructure in your county, and it's you designating the critical infrastructure, not me. Uh, we actually, in the county here, we actually run during emergency operations, uh, we, have, we run a simplex relay site, uh, VHF simplex relay site that sits Actually, it sits on uh, the property of a middle school on one of the highest points in the county. Um, and we, so we decided that was critical infrastructure. We added that in. Question. Okay. Yes. So uh, I'm looking at the uh, EOC and also the uh, critical infrastructure layers for Gwinnett County. And uh, we're actually pretty bare. So okay. if I were to get the addresses of the hospitals and uh, the fire stations, et cetera, et cetera. What, what information would you need? Would you need latitudes, longitudes, street addresses? What exactly to uh, enter these into the database? Um, uh, street addresses, okay. Those, those are, that's probably the easiest way to do it. If not street addresses, then latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. Okay. Yeah. I'll be uh, I'll be sending you something here in the next couple of weeks. Now, who knows how long? <laughs> okay, so yeah. so again, I got a day job. Okay, um, I would really, and again, I, I apologize. I don't, I'm not sure who's talking, but in, in what your role in the county is, I would say I would rather tackle this as a comprehensive effort for Gwinnett County. Um, you know, let's look at fire stations. Let's look at um, um, EMS stations. Let's look at anything else you guys consider critical infrastructure. Okay, and a tackle it. You know, tackle it as a you, you know as as a project that 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 addresses all of that, rather than just hey, let's let's do fire stations now and then six months from now. Oh, hey, we forgot about um, shelters and you know this, that, and the other. So. Um, you know, I, I would, I personally would much rather tackle it that way. So it's one and done and you're ready for your, you're ready for tornado season. All right, Dave. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, this, this is David K4KKF. I'll talk to Greg, the EMA tomorrow and ask him if uh, he would like to, to, or either I'll call Hal and talk to him. And uh, I'll, I've got all the addresses of all the fire stations, towers, um, Police stations, sheriffs, all that. All I got to do is put it in an email and send it to him. If uh, we go with that, let me talk to Hal first. Okay. Okay. And you said street addresses, correct? Yeah, street addresses are is the easiest thing for me to work with. Okay. 
yeah. we, we can probably get you something by the end of the week. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Question? Okay. Yes. I see on the layer list, this is Dave, W4DTR. Um, one of the options was fire stations. How does that differ from the county critical uh, layer? So fire stations is another Department of Homeland Security layer that was developed probably around uh, 2003. And I can tell you in Fayette County, it's out of date. Okay. So you're, this may be dead on accurate for Gwinnett County, but I'll tell you for Fayette County, it wasn't, <laughs> you know, we had, we had built a number of additional stations and we had actually decommissioned two of them, but they were, they're still showing this database. So you may get, you may look at this and say, Hey, this is all good. You know, these, you know, we haven't added any fire stations. We haven't taken any out of commission. Um, that's great. Cause I don't have to do anything. It, yeah, in Gwinnett County, I know, yeah, in the past, what is it, 18 years, a couple of stations have moved to newer stations. Yes, yeah. So, so you know, what it, you know, what it would do is we wouldn't use this data, the, this fire station layer. You guys would give me all new data, okay? And you wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even need to worry about this, this old data. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. just wondering if it was a subset of the county critical layer. The county critical layer can be anything you want it to be. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're separate data sets. Yeah. They're not subsets of each Correct. other. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it goes into a completely different database. Okay. Got it. Thanks. And what you can also get is your own web map with your own URL if you want. Instead of it being like we have here, you know, I got Butts County and Fayette County in as part of this map. But, you know, there's also, it's a different URL, but there's this map published out just for Fayette County use, it ignores everything outside of the county, um, which is on, you know, unreasonable. You're always going to have dependencies outside of the county, but, you know, we just, we just did that because, uh, you know, the EMA asked, Hey, can you just give us a map that shows just Fayette County stuff? And we said, sure, it's easy to do just a database filter. Um, let's well, move quickly well, on to some of these other, this other stuff here, it's stuff that's weather related because, hey, it's almost tornado season, right? It's coming. Okay, so got a bunch of things in here, um, weather related. Uh, let's start with traffic because especially with hurricane season, traffic becomes a real issue. Uh, G dot traffic cameras. Let me turn that off. I can't get that county critical infrastructure. So this is again provided by G dot traffic camera locations um and if you click each camera uh you, all you see is you know the, the name of the camera where it's located click the photo link okay and it shows you the most current photo that's in the database taken by that camera so this one uh is obviously old the sun is set but uh this is i-475 north um and it was taken today at 2 45 p.m oh uh, that's okay. two weeks ago yeah, I know. Talk to the DOT. <laughs> okay, again, you know, we're, 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 as Blanche Dubois says, you know, always dependent on the kindness of strangers. Um, uh, you know, this is just the link that they provide. Why, why these cameras seem to be stuck on the fifth, I don't know. Um, let's go back up to the greater Atlanta area here. Okay, zoom in here. Uh, okay, seems to be the same problem here. I don't know why the DOT has not updated these camera photos. Um, I got to see if I can find somebody to talk to about it. Yeah, yeah, we got a problem here. Hello, DOT. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's possible because of current events that they've discontinued the, uh, the streams. Well, it would have been nice if they put word out about it. Uh, but anyway, okay, is what it is. All right. Um, hopefully that comes back online. The camera locations won't change. Uh, Waze alerts. Um, so, um, you know, this is this is a curated uh, feed that's provided by ESR, ESRI, ESRI, the folks that create this mapping platform. Uh, they provide Starfleet coming in on secured channel. Okay. Uh, so, so they provide this, uh, this continuously updated inform ways information. 
Obviously, it's not as detailed as you would get if you're running the Waze app on your phone, but it is still very useful information. Hurricane evacuation routes. Again, Department of Transportation, hurricane evacuation routes. And I'm doing this for a reason here. I'm building a story, so to speak. Um, and let's see here. Live traffic updates. Okay, kind of um, a simplified traffic update, traffic status update, again, provided by Esri. Nowhere near as good as what you find, uh, again, in the Waze app or with Google Maps. Um, or not Google Maps, but um, yeah, Google Map, you know, the traffic information or your Apple traffic information services. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's free. It works well in this environment. It gives you a good general sense of what's going on. And then let's turn the traffic cameras on. So, you know, imagine um, we're doing evacuations from the coastal counties because of a hurricane. And, you know, you just want to maintain situational awareness. So you turn these layers on. They're all stacked one on top of the other. You have ways traffic information superimposed on top of current traffic flow information. And you have access to the cameras, assuming we can get the cameras working again. So you have the ability to kind of sort of monitor conditions in near real time um, in this map. Now you, you can say, well, wait a minute, you know, I go to the EOC, they got better data feeds. Yeah, they do. But what if you're sitting at home? Okay. Or you're, you know, you're supporting from another location and this is all you've got. Um, this is, this is kind of what this map was built for to give you the layer, the data inf layers and the tools you need to build a situational awareness map that fits your needs. All right. Uh, current radar imagery. Zoom away out here. This is actually a national data feed. Okay. And this updates on a five minute cycle. Um, so, um, uh, you know, it's, it's as accurate as what you get off of the NOAA weather website. The last one down here, uh, hurricanes, watches, warnings, and track intensity forecasts. Um, when hurricane season fires up, I turn this on by default and it stays on all the way through hurricane season. And it shows you hurricane tracks, um, hurricane, tropical storm, tropical depression tracks, uh, and predicted tracks and the error cone or the cone of death, as I like to call it. Um, so, uh, you know, that will stay up. And, you know, in, com in combination with the radar imagery, it really does a good job of, of showing you what's going on, particularly as the storms, you know, either track close up the coast or come into the, 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 the Gulf Basin and, you know, start poking around the coastal areas. And again, this is all in conjunction with repeater information. So you start to look here and say, hey, listen, um, you know, we're evacuating um, up along this route. That you see me highlighting here, you know, what are the repeaters along the way that are available and are any of them echo link? Well, no, that one's not. Uh, how about this one here? Uh, shucks, that's not echo link either. Um, let's turn on echo link repeaters, turn everything off. What I'm uh, kind of telling a story here is, you know, how do we, you know, if we needed to, how do we, how do we reach into these areas and see if we can't contact folks, um, you know, because we just can't reach them directly uh, any other way. Um, so here, you know, this is, here's an echo link repeater. You got the node information. You might be able to tie into that one and say, hey, what are you seeing out there? What's it looking like? That's exactly what we do at the National Weather Service. Is we tie into these repeaters, come up on the come up on the repeater and say, "Hey, can anybody hear me? What are you seeing out there? Are you a trained storm spotter? Um, what are conditions like? Give us uh, give us some updates." Okay. So what you're seeing is is the whole intent of the map is to allow you to build a situational awareness environment and a series of tools that that lets you basically or help you manage situations. Um, 
Okay, so that's it for the data layers. I, again, I encourage you to get in here and play. Let's go real quickly back to the presentation. And we have uh, two there. questions. Yes. So uh, one person asks, are GMRS repeaters found on this map? No. Okay. Um, nobody's feeding me GMRS information. So we took a stab at it a couple of years ago um, and just, you know, I, I know they're out there. I used to be a member of the North Georgia GMRS organization, but um, you know, just the data hasn't flowed um, and nobody's, no, you know, I couldn't seem to find a single individual who had visibility of all of the GMRS infrastructure around the state. I am more than happy to put it in here. I understand it's used a lot. Um, it is a valuable communication resource. I'm more than happy to put it in here, but somebody's got to somebody's got to collect the information and get it to me. <clears throat> uh, the the next question is: Is the radar composite or low tilt? Say that again. Is the radar composite or low tilt? It's composite. It's composite. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. So let's go back to the, the slides real briefly. Um, all right. So um, go ahead and play. Play with the map. You can't break anything in it. Trust me, people have tried. You can't break anything. If you get stuck and, you know, things just, you get so confused, uh, the easiest thing to do is just refresh the map. Just, just refresh your browser and start with a clean slate and go back right at it. Uh, I like to say this, playing leads to familiarity, familiarity leads to expertise. So get in there and play, get in there and play, give me your, and give me your feedback. The worst time to learn this tool is when the hurricane is pointed right at your county. So take the time now, if you, if you think you're going to use this, take the time now to get in there and play around with it and learn it, learn the data layers, learn how the, the widgets work. Um, you know, try it out on your laptop and your mobile device, you know, save, uh, save the link on your smartphone as an icon on your desktop. So you can always, you can always get to it. Okay. Provide feedback. This thing only gets better when I get feedback and I do get a good bit of feedback. Um, you know, it comes in sporadically, but um, you know, folks do take a look at it and give me feedback. And um, you know, I, I, I either make the corrections or add stuff they're looking for. Um, or, you know, sometimes it just, I just can't do it. Um, and I'll tell them, yeah, well, you know, yeah, it, I gave it a try. It just didn't work. So, you know, uh, you have to find another way to tackle that problem. But, but basically, I, I'm, able to, I'm able to satisfy about, you know, 75, 80% of the requests. Uh, GMRS is one example. You know, hey, can you bring in the GMRS repeaters? Yes, I, I'm happy to bring in GMRS repeaters as long as somebody gets me the data. Uh, so here's some known limitations. We talked about some of these already. Uh, you know, poor repeater information. Again, only about 12% of the repeaters in the database have been verified, and there's 600 and 624 repeaters in total. That tells you there's there's a lot of unverified repeaters on this map. Um, the data owners can pull their data at any time, and they do. So the classic example is shelter information. There, for, for years, uh, there were a couple of really good sources. So one was Red Cross, and the other one was Department of Homeland Security that had really good national shelter information. The schools, the churches, uh, the government buildings that were designated as shelters. Then the data started disappearing. It would, like the Red Cross would pull their data for a couple of months, and then they'd repost it. They hadn't changed anything. They just put it back up and then they pull it again. And the same for the Department of Homeland Security information. I am hoping what's happening with the shelter information is somebody at the national level is doing a relook at the shelter database to update it. But all the shelter information went away about three months ago. And I had to, I had to remove the layer from the map because it was just it was throwing errors in the map. That kind of thing happens all the time. The data owners who are providing these REST endpoints can decide they just, they just want to shut that service down. 
and there's no warning. It just isn't available. Um, the way I know it is I start getting errors in the map. Um, so just understand that folks can pull their data at any time. The other thing here is the last bullet is there's no way to take this map offline. You have to have an internet connection. You can't cache all this data locally on your, on your, on your device and run it offline. So you've got to have some measure of, of internet connectivity. Again, you know, it's a web map. Got to be able to get to the web. All right, so what are we looking for in the future? Um, real quick, I'm going to move to a new mapping platform. Uh, it's going to give better overall performance and provide some layer stacking. And hopefully, I'm working with the beta version now. Hopefully, it's going to come sometime in 2021. This is a new mapping platform that Esri is putting out. Uh, we're taking a look at it. Let's see if I can get to it from here. Um, yep, so here it is. Uh, this, is just a, this is just a classic or a brief example. One of the big complaints I get, and I trust me, I hear the complaints, is there's just too much stuff in the layer list, and it's hard to scroll through all of it. This new map interface allows us to allows me to build collapsible and expandable layer contents based on type. So all the repeater information is up under the repeater heading, and I can expand and collapse it. Um, all the emergency infrastructure, same way. It's all you know, whether it's hospitals or EOCs or county critical infrastructure, it's all up under the emergency infrastructure. So it allows you to expand and collapse the data. Performance is a little bit better. It's, it's, it's a little faster, um, does better database reads. Um, so it's, it's overall a better platform, but it's not quite ready for prime time. Um, so it's, it's still just a beta product. And, uh, but I'm really, I'm really looking forward to this coming out mainly for this, the ability to create expandable and collapsible layer lists. Because I get it, I get it. This, this thing here is long and confusing and hard to navigate through and easy to get lost in, so. All right. So what about your needs? We already talked about most of this. Um, additional layers, creating a county critical infrastructure map. Okay, these last four bullets, support for real world emergencies, support for your EMA's exercise and training events, or public events. We actually do some public event support with this, this map, um, and recurring training for your ARIES members. Um, I, am, I am available for support for real world emergencies. That's just a given. If something happens either at the state or the county level or the local level, um, and you need to know, and you want to use this map, you know, and you want to know it's going to be available, I assure you it will be available and you can call me or email me and I will make sure that I am available to meet your needs to make sure the map, you know, does what you need it to do as you work through that real world emergency. So. Uh, support for exercises and training events. Yep, we do it here in Fayette County. More than happy to, to help uh, support anything that you might have going on up there in, in GARS land. Um, uh, you know, scenario-based events, that kind of stuff. You know, more than happy to help out. Um, and public service events. For example, you know, although everything's been canceled because of COVID, we run things like balloons over Fayetteville, um, the Taste of Fayetteville. We've got all these other events that... Um, emergency services gets involved in. And, um, you know, we use this map and the county critical infrastructure piece to support those public service events. You'll see this map running on laptops, you know, in the, some of the EOC trailers and in other places uh, around the events. It becomes like a common operational picture. Um, and then training, I, I give training on this thing all the time. I can train individuals, I can train groups. Um, I've you know, I've traveled to give presentations, live presentations to clubs, all that's kind of shut down. Or we can do it over the web. Um, you know, all you have to do is ask. All right, that's it. Questions and comments. I apologize. It took an hour and a half. I, that's way more than I thought. Um, but you guys asked some good questions. So anything else you need to know? Just curious, the, the layer level, do you have the ability to select uh, the APRS data to overlay on your maps 
to, so you could see repeaters? If you have uh, somebody in transit, what repeater you could raise them on? So, <laughs> yeah, I have, I've tried that a couple of times doing like the KML exports from APRS.FI. Um, the problem is this web map technology does not support the APA, APRS symbol set. So what you get is just a bunch of X's moving around the map. Um, you know, and I can't, I can't even turn on labels, you know, because of the limitations of how the KML the data comes across in the KML file. You know, I can't even turn on uh, either, you know, text as a label to show you what it is. Um, so I have tried a couple of times. I even went, I, I even contacted the, um, you know, the guy, the kid really who runs APRSFI and said, have you ever thought about putting this out as a REST endpoint? And he was absolutely uninterested. You know, he is, he's tightly wedded to the Google um, mapping infrastructure. And I understand it. You know, he's basically getting it for free. Um, if you ever watched any of his presentations, Google's basically giving him, uh, you know, server space, bandwidth, and a couple other things for free. So I get it. Um, I would love to bring APRS into this. I just haven't been able to break the code. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's, you know, hey, I run this and APRS... FI side by side APRS FI is a great, great platform. I think APRS FI saved APRS. Um, um, I just can't merge. I just can't marry the two up. Not yet, anyway. Anything else? No. Um, there's got to be some more. There's got to be some more questions there. Yeah. Whoa. Well, well. One question I'm just, cur I'm just curious about, you know, you've got uh, the two meter analog repeaters are supposed to show up as yellow dots and the 70 centimeter analog repeaters is green, but I noticed if you turn them both on, all you're seeing is yellow. Yeah, that's because most of the time they're sitting on the same tower. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Um, uh, you know, I mean, hey, listen, I, you know, in Fayette County, you know, we got four repeaters sitting on the same tower, the Ellis Road Tower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just, you know, I, I mean, I could disaggregate the data, um, but even at this scale that we're looking at right now, it would still look like one, just, just one mash of, okay. of dots. I just happened to notice that your presentation thing show both green and yellow showing. Yeah, there are some, uh, there are, you know, there are some incidents where, you, you know, there is some offset between 70 and 70 centimeter and two okay. meters on, on locations. But generally speaking, you know, towers are a precious asset. We tend to stuff as much as we can on them, right? Okay. Yeah. So it all just kind of stacks one on top of the other. Okay. Again, so here is, uh, you know, our, our repeater. We got, we got, we're showing three right now. What we're not showing here is the Digipeter. Uh, that's in a different data layer. Um, 31 message from Starfleet coming in on security. So, so anyway, so yeah, that is... Uh, you know, that's an issue. So if you just want to see 70 centimeters, you're going to have to turn off the two meter layer. Could you do a, a search for Whiskey 4 Golf Romeo, the, the, the sure. club's repeater? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay. Um, They're not all in the same location. So if you could zoom out like to the Gwinnett County le level, um, that hopefully will give you some separation of the colors of dots. Uh, but what other, do you color code or, or include 220, six meters, other bands? Um, so 220s, yeah, two, so it's so good question. So let's Yeah, that was that that our six meter repeater and that looks like it's green. Uh, so if you go in here, go to all repeaters, that's a data layer. So this is everything in the database. Okay, um, so I've turned on everything in the database. Let me turn this off here. Okay, so these are all repeaters in the database. Uh, and then you come down here to the attribute table um, and let's refresh this. Do so you have to do your search again? No. Transparency. What I'm trying to do is get the attribute table to show up. New an attribute table. Okay. All right, all repeaters, and um, 
you know, so what, I, what I'm showing you is, is, you know, I don't have any six meters. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a couple. I don't have them called out as a separate layer on the map. And I think it is, I'm looking here. I don't think I've gotten any verifications on six meters, on six meter repeaters or 10 meters. Is there, are there any 10 meter repeaters in the state? That question comes up a lot. Um, I, I believe there are a few. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, I got 2964 and 2966 in here. But again, you know, I, when I asked the question, are these still in existence? Nobody could tell me yes. So, so I didn't create a layer specifically for 10 meters. But so here's how it works. The data is in the database, okay? I, it hasn't been verified, but the data is in the database. It's simply a matter of just running a filter uh, to say, just show me all the repeaters that fall within this frequency range and create that as a new layer and put it in the map. Um, but boy, I'd like somebody to take a hard look at the six meter data and tell me if it's still, you know, how much of it is still valid. Um, because, um, you know, I'd love to work, work through a six meter repeater. I, it's been a long time since I've done that. I do, so know, the, I, I do that, know that if you look at, if you look at repeater book and I'm in Marietta, that the closest repeater to here is like 60 miles away. So it's not a whole lot around Metro Atlanta. No, no, no. Um, so anyway, so it is, it is doable. I would, but I'm, I'm really leery of putting, you know, creating a layer that is just full of bad data. If you know somebody who can take a look at the six meter data and say, yeah, it's, it's, it's still pretty valid. Um, or, you know, we can start fresh. Um, you know, none of this, none of this has been verified. That, you know, that gives me, that gives me great pause. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do it as long as I can get verified data. But without sep without it being a separate layer, you're still showing them. And that's what I was curious about. Yeah. 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 It's in the, it, it, you know, it's in this big bucket called all repeaters. So, um, yep. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, to access this, uh, I might have missed your telling you, but just Google George Aries situational map and should get a link to it. I think the best way to do it is if you go to the George Aries website. This is where I tell everybody to go. Go to the George Aries website. Come over here to maps. Expand the maps listing. Go down to situational awareness. Okay. And it takes you to this web page. Remember, we, you know, I moved it, the launch point to the web page right now. And you can run the map in the web page, although it's kind of restricted in size, or you can just click here, open the map full size. And then do what I do, what I tell everybody at work is bookmark, bookmark, bookmark. Okay. <laughs> bookmark and bookmark it again. Uh, make it an icon on your desktop. Okay. But remember, you know, the fail safe is if you can't remember how to get to it, go to the Georgia Aries website, go to the mapping section, Georgia situational awareness. Okay. So, so back to the uh, uh, prior uh, issue item uh, regarding the uh, six meter, 10 meter repeaters. Uh, you may not, you're, you're probably not aware of that in September of last year, we had Chuck Adams uh, present um, his role in the uh, as being the Georgia Repeater Book Administrator, and um, you know I could I mean I, I don't know if you want to get put in touch with him as far as being able to verify six meter and ten meter repeaters, or you know because you mentioned that you don't as a rule take information from other data sources uh, that are commercial. Is, did I get that right? Correct. Yes, you know, um, uh, I contacted one of them. Who was it? Oh, Arts Artsci. Hey, I don't even know if they're still in business out in California. Is it? Um, he actually contacted me, and he said, "Hey, listen, can we, you know, can we do a lash up?" And I said, "I'm I'm happy to, but understand you can't commercialize my data." 
and he ran away from that as fast as he could. Uh, I'm more than willing to talk to anybody about repeater data. Um, you know, so, you know, if, you know, if, uh, you know, repeater book would allow me to use their data. Um, although I suspect a lot of what's in here, you know, even though I, I got it from I, uh, other sources, I suspect a lot of what's in here matches pretty closely with what's, what is in repeater book. Um, but I'll talk to anybody about repeaters. I'll okay. talk to anybody. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I really want the owners to verify it, though. That's my ultimate goal. Aries, Georgia Aries' ultimate goal is to have the, the owners, the trustees, or the county ECs verify the data. So Two I get emails. Here. I get emails all the time saying, hey, listen, I was driving through uh, you know, I was driving through Valdosta. I couldn't bring this repeater up. I think it's off the air. I thank you very much, but I, you know, I need you know, I need the owner to verify that for me. Uh, so, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I got two ones real quick. Go ahead. Uh, number one, do you happen to know Glenn Beaupre when he was at the FAA working on the fifth runway at Hartsfield? Say the name again. Glenn Beaupre. He's since retired, but since you've been. Uh, with no. Hartsfield, okay. No. No, no. I, I started working there about a year after the the fifth runway opened. Okay. So he might well, he, he might have been. For, he was still there for a while. He did a lot of stuff with the runway and the radio systems and stuff like that there with the FAA. What, you said he was with the FAA. Yeah. Okay. That's probably why I, we don't talk. You, we, oh. the Hartsfield doesn't talk to the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except in, during inspection times. <laughs> yeah, it was just one of those funny things. He was my senior patrol leader when I was a kid, and. Oh, okay. We were in scouts yeah. together and ran into each other 35 years later. It was kind of wow. like, you got to be kidding me. So wow. it would be a small world. Anyway, I noticed uh, on the map, just an observation. Well, there were some areas, some counties that you didn't have any repeaters. You got, you noticed that, did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I mean, yeah. none. So we, uh, so let, let's, oh. Yeah, look at south of, yeah, hold on. just Let west me, of uh, Sumter uh, National Forest and, and southwest Georgia for that matter. Let me bring this up. So we actually talk about that quite a bit, um, you, you know, with, you know, with for like emergency David services. Yeah. yeah, emergency services. You want to be able to get some stuff out there. Look at that Wilkes County. There's nothing there. Yeah, same thing. So further southwest. You know, so this is this is kind of an intensity map, uh, distribution intensity map. Um, you know, you take a look at where we have got some got some repeater coverage problems. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, Wilkes. You know, Wilkes isn't really out there in the middle of nowhere. Not really. Oh. But, you know, this this area down here in Southwest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's 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 desolate. That area that Lance Roth used, the, the senior forecaster at, at the National Weather Service was talking about, was an arc that basically runs from Burke County south all the way, you know, down to southeast. He said, you know, the repeater coverage is really poor out there and it's very hard to get a hold of folks. Um, out in that area that's why we always almost always had to go to hf um but but yeah i mean there's you know jeff davis and talfair county you know yeah oh man yeah that's bad it's 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 bad and we talk often about ways of seeding repeaters out here but you got to find you know you got to find hams in the area that are willing to you know to be at least trustees of these things sure and it's it's tough to find now there is a lot of HF activity in a lot of these areas. Oh yeah, um, but for repeaters, no, it's pretty thin. That's amazing. Yeah, yep, it is. Okay, and, and that goes back to the original problem: is you know what's the distribution look like? It's it's you know it's not bad, but boy, and there's some areas where it's just you know empty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A any other questions? No. Okay. All right. Yeah, Brian, thank you so much for Let me so yeah, let me ask let me uh, this brings up one more point I want to bring up. So I've gotten a, a number of questions in the last couple of months. Will I accept repeater information for repeaters outside of the state like in Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, whatever. The answer is an emphatic yes. You know, RF doesn't respect political boundaries, okay? We do have a few. Notice they got one up here in the Great Smokies. 
Uh, I actually have one or two uh, in South Carolina, just across from Augusta. Um, so I'm willing to take repeater information. The same rules apply, but I'm more than happy to, I, I really want to bring, start bringing repeater information in from the surrounding states. So, okay. Sounds good. All right. So Any Brian, other questions? If not, get a hold of me by email. My call sign at ARRL.net.